This video is being recorded on April 12, 2024. So by the time y'all see it, it'll most likely be the month of May. And the reason why I said that is because last month in the month of March, a video went viral of a PC girl by the name of Kaylee Gain beaten, being beaten by this black girl whose name is Marnice DeClue. And it went viral, super viral on social media. And you had the usual suspects come out there saying Marnice deserves to be charged as an adult. They even went as far as saying that this was a hate crime and all this, that, and the third, while dismissing the issues going around and surrounding Kaylee Gain. Even with news coming out about her and her behavior that could have definitely stemmed to what happened to her that particular day. Fast forward to about a month later, you have another incident that happened, but this time in Connecticut, where you had a PC girl get beat by a black girl. And I think it was me. It might have been more than one black girl. Now, I'm not going to play the video, but right there, as you can see on your screen, it's a warning sign. That's the, actually the video right there. And I have it paused there for a reason because I don't even want to show the imagery because you know how YouTube can be. So we're just going to show it, like have it right there. By the time y'all see this video, y'all probably may have already seen the video. Or for all we know, this may be your first time hearing about it. But there was an issue that was going on where these two girls got into it. It started more as a verbal confrontation and then it turned physical when the PC girl called one of the girls or a couple of the black girls the N word. And then that's when all hell broke loose, as y'all can see by the title. It says disturbing video shows white teen being viciously beaten in public park after she allegedly used a racial slur towards black girls. Now, because of publication purposes, they had to say allegedly. But if you watch the video, you can hear clear as day. The white girl called those black girls girls the n-word like you can really hear it so i'm gonna go ahead now and read this article because there's also something that i have to implement towards the end disturbing video shows a white teenage girl being viciously beaten in a public park by two black girls after she allegedly used a racial slur toward them during the attack in the video a white teenager is seen flailing on the ground in byron park in greenwich greenwich Connecticut around 8 30 p.m. Tuesday while two black teen girls land a series of blows on her according to snapchat footage obtained by ABC 7 the victim is then seen being dragged down a hill by one of the assailants as onlookers shout seemingly egging on the violence and record the mayhem moments later the victim is seen sitting up on the ground while surrounded by a swarm of others yelling back and forth with several of them now, keep in mind, they keep referring to the PC girl as a victim, but she was the one that kicked it off by calling them the N word, but they're calling her the victim. The victim then screams, hit me again to someone in the crowd and then uses the N word. The video appears to show. So it sounds like to me it was just a regular altercation that was going on between the two of them or maybe between three of them. And then the PC girl then yells that out. And then that's when it escalated further. The crowd erupts in disbelief as another round of violence breaks out. The second beating was so severe that the person recording the Snapchat began screaming multiple times for the attacker for the two attackers to chill. The attackers appeared to beat the victim until she fell unconscious and they needed to be dragged away by onlookers. Police say they found the victim, a junior at Greenwich High School, lying on the ground when they responded to calls about the bizarre weekday gathering in the park. She was rushed to a local hospital and treated for minor injuries. What ignited the initial violence is still unknown. We're looking at motives why people would do these things, so that's yet to be determined, Greenwich Police Department Captain John Slassars told ABC7. Of the nearly two dozen people seen in the Snapchat video, two of them have been arrested and five have been identified as being involved in the attack. Additional charges against others involved are pending, police said. Detectives from our community impact section have identified all the suspects involved in the fight at Byron Park, the department posted on Facebook Thursday. All subjects involved will be arrested and referred to Stanford Superior Court. Those suspected to have taken part in the beating are from Greenwich, Stanford, and Port Chester, according to law enforcement. It's a new phenomenon when you see in the last few years, you know, people are assaulting people. Greenwich first selectman Fred Camillo told the outlet. Some are just vicious and they're videotaping it as if it's some type of game. Camillo said there are three different entities of the police department investigating the assault and that the town is taking the attack seriously. 
So there you have the actual story right there. So you have this incident where it started off as a fight between three girls. It was two black girls versus the one white girl. And I don't, like they said, they don't know what led up to it. I honestly don't know what led up to it either. But we know what what ended up, what caused her to end up in the hospital was when she said, hit me again and refer to them as the N word. First off, you already got your ass beat. Why would you egg them on even further by calling them that word, knowing that was going to ignite them and fuel their anger and rage even more so they can continue to wail on you and then put you in the hospital? Because apparently, uh, she, I guess that first part of the ass whooping wasn't enough. She wanted uh, clearly she wanted more. And this is why I said that we as black people need an anti black hate crime bill on the books. Because the minute she let that word come out of her mouth like that, it went from just a regular casual fight to an anti-black hate crime. The minute she said that word. And she could have controlled herself and not said it, but she literally instigated it on and literally brought on more of her own uh, of her own uh, physical injuries. Knowing she was already outnumbered in the first place and no one was really on her side. So it makes you wonder, she could have been the catalyst for the reason why they were in that park anyway. Now, mind you, this happened at night. This wasn't during the day. The sun was already set. It was dark outside. The only light that was really out there was from people's phones. So, of course, you know, they're going to try to get to the bottom of it to see exactly where all of this started. But the fact that that white girl had the nerve to call them that, that lets you know that she definitely played a huge part into why it even got to that point now going back to what i was saying about the anti-black hate crime bill two reasons why that needs to definitely occur especially when you're thinking about this situation right here one if we had an anti-black hate crime bill on the books typically you would hope but don't hold your breath that they would think twice before even saying that word because they already know the consequences of the bill being in place that would again protect black people and there could be a penalty or a consequence of some sort behind it but don't get it twisted it won't protect you from an ass whooping especially since we haven't had a bill to protect us from those kind of slurs and attacks over the years so black people are still going to be using them hands and them feet and them knees and them elbows and whatever else is attached to their body in, in, as a use of self-defense it's just going to happen regardless option number two is to not put the anti-black hate crime bill on the books and let something like this continue to happen now remember when it came to kaylee Gaines, they went out of their way to make that thing go viral and then notice they started to fall back when they found out she had a black boyfriend and stuff came out about her being suspended the day before because she was involved in fighting she had a crew of girls that would go around just jumping people and, and then when all of that came out they started to fall back on her and it got a little bit quiet but then you had the attorney general the district attorney try to use the dei thing and that you know that could have messed up their case right there so they basically just told him to shut up and be quiet and let them handle it because you're not in a position to really speak on this at all. I don't think this one right here is going to have the same effect as Kaylee Gaines simply because this girl used the N word. When she did that, that's when the gloves came off, literally. And any protection she thought she could have had is gone out the window because if they have a solid case, and I won't hold my breath with this either, they can use her saying that N word as a reason as to why they continue to fight her. Because the fight was pretty much done. They was already done doing whatever they wanted to do to her. But when she called them that word, they spun the block literally before even getting to the corner and went back even harder. And when people say, oh, you know, racism and anti-blackness is going to die with the older generation, like, you know, the grandparents and all of that. Keep in mind, these are teenagers. This was a teenage girl who is a junior, so she's between the ages of, what, 15 and 16. Somewhere around that range, or 16 and 17, rather. When she said this, which means she was born in the early 2000s, going all right, almost to the mid part of the 2000s, almost to the 2010s, almost in that range. She was like, what, 2008, I think, if my math is correct. If my math is correct. So... She's in that, she's in, she's Gen Z. 
So when they tell you anti-blackness or whatever has died, don't believe that. Don't believe it. She knew when to say that word and who to say it to. But she also found out that those two girls wasn't going to tolerate it. Like, and, and you can tell the black girls was very raged out because when they were fighting them just initially before she said it, nobody was trying to pull them off them. They just let them do their thing. But when she said it and they went back for her the second time, that's when people was like, okay, we got to pull them off her because at that point they was probably handling her like a rag doll. She, she said something to trigger them just so she can turn around and try to be the victim. This girl who said that is no victim in any capacity. I'll go even further to say she probably wasn't even a victim for the first ass whooping she got handed to before she said that word. She almost sounds like a person who just loves confrontation. She just strikes me as the type just based on her when she said that word. She could have just left it alone, took her lumps, and went home like everybody else, but no, she had to take it a step further and call him that word and, and now look at her. So, there you have it. And if there's any more updates that'll come from this story, by the time I get ready to upload it, I'll make sure to insert it in here uh, somewhere.